We begin with matters education. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has said that the government is doing enough for learners in the country and that the media should focus on the brighter side. The Cabinet Secretary took on the media for not doing enough to project the positive image of the Ministry of Education and only focusing on the challenges. Professor Magoha accused the media of demonizing him instead of working closely with the ministry to encourage learners during this challenging times. Come Chemenza with that report. The Ministry of Education has expressed disappointment over how media has been covering education matters in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha, while at a breakfast meeting with journalists, said the media has not been balanced in its reportage. I accept it to be a public figure, so I can take all the arrows, but I am very strong. But I want to understand you, because here you are saying that you are doing things in good faith. Today, in one of your media, print media, I don't mind the cartoons, but I am supposed to be fueling a bus without wheels, and it is full of children. And here, no, 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 and here you are saying that you are balanced. Yet there are many buses, many school buses, that are carrying children successfully to schools. In the name of God, are you being fair to government here? Because it is like the government doesn't know what it is doing. We are groping around and we are fueling a vehicle which has no wheels, which is going nowhere. That is my perspective. Mago has saying with the pandemic having taken a toll on the education sector, media should be in the front line in encouraging learners after schools reopened to enable the society have an easier time in dealing with the challenges. Nobody is perfect. There's also another thing that I want to mention. If you want to make somebody a demon, you can do so. But remember that I'm serving the children and that I'm not looking for a job. I'm serving our children. So if you want to contextualize what you are reporting, start from the beginning to the end. Don't just cut the center which demonizes somebody. This I'm beginning to see because I start from a perspective then when I'm at the peak, you show me there, and I just look like a mad person talking. Yet there was a reason why, and you easily edit it out. And I'm told you are the editors. According to the CS, the government is doing enough to address issues of infrastructure in schools, and that 15 billion shillings was set aside for maintenance of schools. Don't you think the government is doing what it has done, it, it should do to our beloved children? That is not to mention the medical scheme for all children in secondary school covered by NHIF at the price tag of Kenya shilling, four billion. Kindly let us give credit to government where it is uh, deserved. Eh? While reiterating that social distancing in schools shall remain the biggest challenge, the CS was categorical that the schools shall be a no-go zone for outsiders, including the media, terming the measure as crucial with the KCSE exams around the corner. Health Chief Administrative Secretary Masi Mwangangi, however, says the ministry has put in measures for psychosocial support for learners and teachers. We've looked at the sick bays within the schools, we've looked at our school nurses to be able to also give them capacity building for them to recognize when a child is struggling, for them to recognize when a teacher is struggling. Kamche Menza for Channel One News. Thank you, Kamche, for that report. Now, moving on, as schools reopened, at least five schools in Tiati sub-county in Baringo County are yet to resume learning after learners failed to report back to school. Tiati Deputy County Commissioner Jackton Orieng says his security team is currently undertaking an elaborate plan to ensure all learners report back to their schools. <laughs> This is the state of Nalikat Primary School in Tiati Sub County, Baringo County. The only visitors here are these goats having a field day. Despite resumption of learning on Monday, this school remains deserted with learners opting to stay away due to shortage of food and water occasioned by acute drought ravaging the area. We are made to know that learners have, most of the learners also have migrated uh, near to sources of water. Uh, 
As you see, the area is dry as per now. There is no water. A similar situation is replicating in Kongor, Sugut, Nasorot and Satan schools where classrooms remain locked while those open are empty. At Cheptunoyo Primary School, only a few learners have returned for the resumption of studies. In some classes, like class 7, there is no boy, even one. I don't know where they are. In class 6, there is only one boy. And most of the, the, those who are present are girls in all classes. According to Chapter North School head teacher Christine Keter, the turnout of learners has been interrupted by the circumcision season and teen marriages. These retrogressive cultural activities affect learning because when this uh, happens, like uh, last, uh, last year, July, I heard of several boys who attended Savannah ceremony and among them were class eight pupils who never turned up for their studies last time. At the same time, Tiati Deputy County Commissioner Jackton Orieng says his security team is undertaking an elaborate plan to ensure all learners report to their schools. Orieng is further putting on notice parents who are yet to take their children to school, even as he adds that by staying away from school, the boys will fuel acts of banditry in the region. We have instructed all the chiefs on the ground to physically fish out uh, the pupils and make sure that they go back to school. Even those who are already pregnant, uh, those who are, we hear that some have even married, we want these people to be fished out to go back to school. Weekly for kids, Channel 1 News. And from the empty classes in Baringo County to Kitui County, where it's not business as usual, Kitui County Commissioner John Odengo has warned parents who fail to take their children to school that action will be taken against them. Odengo said his team has launched an extensive plan to track down on learners who are yet to report back to school. The county commissioner said security officers and chiefs were following up on cases where learners have failed to report back to school after the nine-month break. Na hata polisi wako tiari watasakwa na kupere kwa shuleni na wasasi wawo watajipu ni kwa nini wajayenda shule. Ondego said parents have no excuse not to take their children back to school since public primary and day secondary education are free. Wasasi wanatakiwa wapereke watoto shuleni na tutaansa kusaka wasasi ambao wajapereke watoto shule the county commissioner has also warned those who have impregnated schoolgirls that their days are numbered. And Narok Governor Samuel Oletunai has urged the local administration to take action against those impregnating school-going children. Speaking in Kondamet Secondary School while opening an administration block in classes, Tunai further called on the Narok Commissioner and his team to crack the whip on those behind female genital mutilation in the area. He said his administration will work closely with the Office of Narok County Commissioner to ensure that affected girls return back to school. My office with that of the county commissioner are working closely to ensure that all our girls are safe and that those who are responsible for those pregnancies are brought to book. Lazima watoto wetu wa chana wetu tuachunge wa tuwapatie nafasi wa some ili waendelee kusoma
still on our day's coverage on matters education, over 7,000 needy students in Kajiado County are set to benefit from school bursary courtesy of the county government. 450 of these students in secondary schools, colleges and universities will benefit from the full scholarship. Kajiado Governor Joseph Olelenko said his administration is committed to continue supporting formal education across the county. Needy students in Kajiado County are set to benefit from disbursement of school bursary amounting to 50 million shillings, which is part of 150 million shillings annual bursary budget allocation. 450 of these students, both in secondary schools, colleges and universities, will benefit from the full scholarship. Kajando Governor Joseph Olelenku warned the committee responsible funds allocating not to politicize the exercise. Na mimi nataka kuwapatia onyo watu wa board wa scholarship na wale wa awards wasiruhusu siasa kuingilia kati na kuhakikisha kwamba kama mtu a support mwana siasa fulani apati bursary, apati scholarship kwa sababu hiyo ndio sababu tumetenga pesa hizi. Olelenku noted that his administration is committed to support formal education and that needy students must be considered despite the parents' political affiliation. Masomo ya watoto yetu inapita tofauti zetu sa kisiasa na tofauti zetu sa kikabila. The timely bursary scheme launch was lauded by education stakeholders. Not Executive Secretary Eli Koringo and the government to release funds to school for seamless learning. Especially now, schools are grappling with COVID-19 pandemic. Hilo ni juku mulao na hawawezi kukwepa. Si viyama kusukumia walimu waku. Ama walimu maswala mengine, eti mwende mujipange. Parents who grace the occasion loud the initiative by the county government. Sisi kama county, tunafanya jukumu ili kuprepare shule zetu kupokea wanafuzi. Kwa shule za primary, and ECD to the weather to provide 300 hand wash and soaps to those schools and we are distributing this way. And Nyandarwa woman representative Faith Gitao now wants the national government to inject funds to schools in the region citing neglect on distribution of desks and provision of hand washing points for learners. Gitao took issue with the Ministry of Education for failing to create a conducive environment for learners as they resume classes after the nine month break. Irene Mchumodim brings us these details. Nyandarwa woman representative Faith Gitao claims the government has neglected the region on distribution of assembled school desks, provision of water and sanitizers as schools resume. While on a tour to various schools in Nyandarwa, Gitao wants the government to provide funds to cater for the school going children's needs. Hawana space. Na ata ukiangalia hizi uh, classes, they are not up to standard. Ha, ziko ata dirisha hakuna uh, desks nasikia kuna desks zidi tengenezwa Gitao says majority of schools in rural areas lack adequate classrooms to cater for the pupils and students a crisis which she says does not support social distancing measure in the fight against the spread of coronavirus sio kusema ati kuingine wamepewa desks nda kuingine hawajapewa kwa hivyo hapa kipipiri kuanzia hapa kabati waletewe desks kwa sababu wawa watoto wako na shida kubwa sana Irene Mchuma Odim Channel 1 we still have more that we have lined up for you ahead. Do stay with us. This is KBC Lunchtime News. We are going to be taking a short break. We are coming right back. Of Kona. No, Simon. I love you. 
That's all I know. Mom! Julia! Are you okay? I'm sorry I believed you. I'm sorry I fought with you. It's okay. If something happened to you, I wouldn't have. Now I get why dad did what he did. When people you love are in danger, you'll kill. Mwane Faisal ndo yu aliwekelea bidi ya TV. Na ndio yu anenda nao Faisal. Ebu tuwa medi vitu uwekelea bidi. Milienda kwenye website ya Quickbid. Mm -hmm. Nikatizama nika chagua kuwekelea kwenye TV. Mm -hmm. Sa miliwekelea mara tatu. Nikaja kwa mshindi, nika kutana bidi enye me nifanya kwa niko mshindi, ilikuwa ni miyamoja, stini na nani. Sa leo mika itua, nikaja, nika chukua, nchukue TV yangu. Aya, Faisal, ayo mali yako. Kusaidie. Asanti, asanti. Eh? Jiunga na QuickBid ni raisi. Enda kwenye M-Pesa, bonyeza paybill, kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi bitha unayotaka. Na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 kama idadi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke, niyo ununua. QuickBid, bitha abora kwa bidi ya chini. The magic of FA Cup is back with mouth-watering ties. As the Premier League and Championship clubs enter the competition in the third round, KBC Channel 1 will ensure you don't miss out live and exclusive on your true sports partner from the 8th to 11th of January 2021 as we kickstart the new year with you in mind. Save the dates for the best and route to the finals. Tonight on KBC Channel One. See, selfishness is mean and destructive. Yours is for the greater good. And think of the boxers. How much good this gym brings into their life. Do you really want to take on Abasi? Again? You know what he's capable of. Abasi won't let this one go. People will get hurt. Do you want that on your head? Those children, Lazima Wapigane, Wangufu. They cannot let that man win. You are going to deny me what is mine again. He's manipulating me and you. He knew you'd come to me. You're telling me to step back for Julia and Manjala like you always do. Tonight on KBC Channel One. But the sweet pleasure that I get by treating him like an animal and seeing him suffer each day would not have been possible. The royal physician's house is on fire. What? And he also died in that fire. Kichak, King Bindusar had given the seal to his son Ashok. Not to you. A show? Prince, a show! Welcome back and uh, thank you so much for staying with us. On this second part, we begin with an update on the Lake Baringo tragedy. The last body of uh, three victims of the Saturday Lake Baringo boat accident has uh, been recovered. The body of the 16-year-old girl was retrieved from the lake by divers, bringing to an end a three-day search of the boat accident victims. The boat was carrying 12 people from Kampi Samaki, capsized while on its way to the famous Kokwa Island. Nine Nine of the people on the boat were rescued while the three lost their lives. The bodies were found three kilometers away from the scene of accident. However, the boat has not yet been retrieved from the lake. 
Nicholas Kano, one of the rescuers, said they found the bodies at the north side of the lake, away from the accident scene. Tumeenda kutulisha wanainji na tukambia poleni na hata wakaelewa ini ajali kama tuile ya barabara. And uh, day two, tukafaulu sana. Tukapata milimili kuelekea upande wa northern part, milimili zote. Ya the mtoto mdogo na ule kijana. Uh, leo sasa tumeshughulika asubuhi saa 12 tulizunguka tumeanza kuwa na wasiwasi. Lakini kitu masaa ya saa sita hivi. Saa tano naelekea saa sita. Mungu akatujalia tukapata 3 km spot southern part of the lake. Ilienda kando kabisa. The vessel with 12 passengers capsized at 3.30 p.m. last Saturday while on its way to the famous Konkwa Island. Nine others were rescued while three, including the coxswain, one-year-old child and a 16-year-old girl, sank with a boat. The boat is said to have been carrying two families who are residents of Kampisamaki and Kokwa area. The families were on an expedition to Teddy Bear Hotel at the island. Area Member of Parliament William Cheptumo, who was at the scene, said there's need to train more divers so that they can help in times of need. This is the latest tragic incident at the lake where several lives have been lost in recent years. For Channel 1 News, I'm Nisi Imano Okoth. A really sad note there. Now, away from that, Gatundu South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuria, now wants the President Uhuru Kenyatta to form a joint parliamentary select committee to secure beneficial proposals in the Building Bridges Initiative Bill. Kuria says it will be a disappointment to all if the entire document is rushed to a referendum, then it flops. Kuria says the document had very good proposals, like increased revenue allocation to counties, creation of new constituencies, in which underrepresented and of course among other issues. Let's get more from Suleiman Yeri. Kuria urged the head of state to convene an inter-party parliamentary group meeting to discuss possibilities of passing the useful proposals in parliament. He said that while the document could be good, requisite law amendment procedures were not followed. Everyone, we sit together, a team of members of parliament from both the National Assembly and the Senate, probably I would recommend seven aside, just like we did in 2016 when we were doing the IBC reforms. He reiterated that efforts to move on to a referendum in the current state of affairs in the country will see the document embarrassingly receive low support across the country. <laughs> Meanwhile, a section of Baringo County legislators have urged area senator Gideon Moy to contest for presidency in next year's general elections. TRT member of parliament William Kamket, who led the legislators, asked residents of the larger North Rift to solidly rally behind Senator Moy, whom he described as a person of high integrity with enough muscle to lead Kenyans. <laughs> Kilifi County Government has uh, begun a major spraying operation to contain locust invasion in the county. Agriculture and Livestock Chief Officer Frederick Kaingu has said that a team of 50 trained National Youth Service officers working hand in hand with the county government officials and the National Drought Management Authority officers have been dispatched to spray the affected areas. <laughs> In an operation to spray the locusts which invaded the county late last year, Kilifi County government has already procured 3,000 liters of Pentagon and 800 liters of Deltrametrin EC to be used by trained officers from the National Youth Service to combat the locusts. Niweusi weusi na baada siku kama nane kumi wanaform vans, yani wanatembea sasa kwa kundi kama jeshi. Na hapo ndo tunasema kwamba Ndiyo wanasayansi wanasema hii dawa delta metrin pamoja na pentagon inafaa kwamba ikaweze kutumika ikaweze kuua ile stage ya wale ambao sasa wamekuwa hatch na wanatembea ni rahisi kuweza kwa nyunizia. 
Speaking at the official launch of the exercise in Gongoni, Agriculture and Livestock Chief Officer Frederick Kaingu said the county government embarked on the operation as the locust could hatch and cause damages that could lead to famine. Na pia tutaweza kuenda kuchukua a few farmers tuwapatie vifaa badae nuts and sprayers pamoja na dawa ambao watakuwa lead farmers ya kuweza kuhakisha kwamba wanasaidia kule chini vijijini. Wakionekana mahali hakuna haja ungoje ijapokuwa timu itakuwa on the ground wale lead farmers watakuwa lead scouts wa fanin wa kunyunyizia mara moja na kuwaua. The trained NOS officers shall be working hand in hand with county government officials and the National Drought Management Authority officers. According to Kaingo, so far 30 scouts have received training to carry out surveillance on the presence of the pest for effective control measures instituted. How wakona tools, na wakona knowledge, na skills, uwezo wakueza kuchukua data ama information ama Mambo ambayo yanafanyika hapa chini na kuweza kwa katika system. Na... The development coming as area leaders cautioned locals against eating desert locusts that have invaded the county as they may have traces of chemicals from previous spraying. Ben Chumba, reporting for Channel 1 News. From Kilifi to Taitata Veta, where the county governor, Granton Samboja, is calling on young people to take advantage of vocational training centers being commissioned by the county government. Samboja says that a big number of young people in the county are jobless. Speaking at Ngolia and Mwangea areas after commissioning dormitories and vocational training centers, Samboja says his government is working hard to ensure that many young people secure employment in various departments in the county government. Samboja at the same time called on the government to deal with land cartels in the region. Nani meandika barua na muandaviru wa meandika barua. Tumemuomba waziri Farida Karonei atuondole maafisa wote wa ardhi wa serikali kuu walioko kaunti hii ya taita taveti. Jama wamekuja hapa kazi Ati ni survey, akiwa na kupimia kwako, anachukua nukutakadha. Unaona wote wako na maarithi kila mahali. Let us take advantage ya politekniki hii. Ili vijana wetu wengi, wapate ujuzi, ili watumie ujuzi ule, kutafuta riziki zao za kila siku. And internationally, Democratic candidate Rafael Warnock is projected to win the first of two nail-biting United States Senate races in Georgia and sitting Republican Kelly Loeffler with 98% of the votes counted. Now control of Senate in the first two years of Democratic president-elect Joe Biden's term will be determined by the outcome of the second runoff. The results from Georgia is a blow for outgoing Republican President Donald Trump. The election is being rerun because none of the candidates in the November general election achieved the 50% needed for victory under the state rules. If confirmed, Warnock would become the first black senator for the state of Georgia, a slavery state in the U.S. Civil War, and only the 11th black senator in the U.S. history. Claiming victory, Warnock paid tribute to his mother, Valine, who has a teenager worked as a farm laborer. Although Biden's Democrats would need to take both seats to gain full control of Congress, the Republican Party of outgoing President Donald Trump needs only to win one in order to retain the Senate. Thousands of votes remain to be counted in the Atlanta suburbs, such as DeKalb County, which is expected to go heavily for the Democrats. Georgia election official Gabriel Stalin said that final results were expected by lunchtime American time on Wednesday. More than three million votes, about 40% of the state's registered voters were cast before Tuesday. Early voting was a key benefit for Biden in November's White House election. If both Democrats win, the Senate will be evenly split, 50-50, allowing incoming Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris a tie-breaking vote. And moving on, Hong Kong has arrested dozens of pro-democracy activists and politicians, accusing them of trying to overthrow the city's government. The arrests formed part of the largest crackdown since the law's introduction. Speak 
Looking at the city's Legislative Council, Hong Kong's Security Secretary John Lee confirmed a group of people were arrested as part of an operation targeting those suspected of overthrowing the city's government. He stated the government will not tolerate subversive acts. The group arrested under a controversial new security law was involved in a primary vote to find the most popular candidates ahead of elections for local government in 2020. Among those arrested are thought to be three members of the Civic Party, seven members of the Democratic Party, 21 opposition district councillors, 13 candidates from the primaries, two academics behind the primary strategy, and one U.S. citizen and human rights lawyer from the raided law firm. Well-known opposition figures are among the detained, including James To, Lam Chuek Ting, Lester Shum, and Benitai, one of the initiators of the primaries. The U.S. lawyer is John Clancy, chairman of the Asian Human Rights Commission. And now coming back uh, to the country, police in Kiambu County are investigating the killings of five family members who were brutally murdered by, murdered by a known criminals on Tuesday night at their home in Kagongo Village, Kiamba Sub County. The lifeless bodies of the five, including a man and his wife, were found lying inside their home by neighbors who alerted the police. Their house help had also been murdered in cold blood on Monday, and it is still unclear who might be behind the crying. Again, On to business, uh, the government has uh, begun communication with marinas that use the Likoni Channel on the addition of the newly built Likoni floating footbridge to ensure safe passage of vessels. The Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure is also ensuring that navigation charts are updated with a new feature that will guide seafarers safely through the channel. Pedestrians cross the footbridge at the Likoni crossing channel. The nearly one kilometer steel bridge has a 150 meter floating pontoon that is opened by powered machines to allow ships to pass through. It gives them a direct footing, saves them money, saves them time, and it's easier. It's easier access uh, to go home. To ensure safe coordination and passage of vessels, government says communication on the new feature will be filed with the International Hydrographic Organization, which ensures that all the world's seas, oceans and navigable waters are surveyed and charted, thereby supporting safety of navigation and the protection of the marine environment. Ships can also pass through easily without any problem. And it's generally very good for facilitating thinking about the local monarchy and of course facilitating uh, maritime traffic and uh, international trade. The project is expected to end the perennial human congestion at vital busy crossing channels and to ease pressure of overcrowded Likoni ferries during the current coronavirus pandemic. The bridge will also be a landmark in the tourist resort city of Mombasa. Uh, one of the things we are going to do is uh, uh, a port state uh, facilitating traffic is issue the necessary notices because 
KPA took over running of the bridge when it was opened, saying they would ensure the bridge operates during peak hours in the morning and evening to reduce congestion in the nearby Likoni Ferry Channel. The authority is ensuring COVID-19 protocols are followed by pedestrians using the facility. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. And horticulture exporters say new levies charged on exports will see farmers' earnings reduced by more than 350 million shillings annually. The Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya says the new levies that came into force this month and lockdowns in some European nations will impact the sector, which is projected to have a slowed growth in this year's first quarter. Exported 307 million kilograms of assorted fresh produce worth 151.1 billion shillings, a 5% increase from 2019. Farmers' earnings are expected to drastically reduce this year after the implementation of the Horticulture Crop Regulation 2019 that imposes an export levy of 0.2% on all horticulture exports. Players in the sector estimate the new levies will increase taxes from the current annual average of 90 million shillings to a whopping 377 million shillings. This levy that uh, the government has imposed on the exporters, the 0.25% uh, levy uh, on free on board basis, uh, is a burden to exporters. Initially, exporters were paying 30 cents a kilo for all the produce that uh, was, was exported. According to the Fresh Produce Consortium, the levies will push over 40% of horticulture export farms out of business. These are farms in some counties have started closing shop due to high levy charges by county governments. Companies, for example, have pulled out of certain counties, uh, like Narok, that uh, charges uh, levies uh, 100 shillings per crate of French beans. So that is very expensive, and uh, I am aware of a number of companies that have stopped uh, growing French beans in, uh, in Narok. The consortium says it's pushing for new markets in North Africa and South Africa as the African continent of free trade area takes effect. Sales, other than just looking at the auction as an option to be able to place flowers into people's houses and different shops, other than relying on the, on the on, 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 on auction that at one point was, was closed because of the uh, COVID. Horticulture exporters are urging the government to give full disclosure on the MOU detail between Kenya and South Korea on the country's banana and broccoli market quota in the Asian nation to enable farmers produce the required quality and volumes. Benson Drew by reporting for Channel One Business. And now moving on, cargo transporters and travellers will have the option of using the train from Mombasa all the way to Malaba by the end of the year as Transport Ministry has assured the Naivasha Malaba meter gauge railway upgrade will be completed by July 2021. Transport CS James Masharia says 11 billion shilling project is on course and will offer alternative transport options for users. By revamping the section of the meter gauge railway line, the government will link the standard gauge railway line and the meter gauge railway line in order to provide a seamless connection between the port of Mombasa and Lake Victoria and Kisumu and also a main border point with neighboring Uganda at Malaba. The end result will see Kenya Railways transport cargo exclusively on rail, albeit with an interchange from SGR to MGR line at Longonot Station. We have considered the entire country in terms of the railway network. And as of now, we are doing actually a new line from Naivasha, a new line all the way to Naivasha Logonot, new line, MGR line of 23 kilometers. The 24.3 kilometer link that will facilitate the transition of cargo from SGR to MGR line at the interchange point is under construction at the Naivasha Inland Container Depot. When it gets to Naivasha, the old station of MGR, is being upgraded all the way to Malaba. The cost of that project is 11 billion shillings. It will be completed by July like this year. And so from July, you can be sure that you'll be riding in a very comfortable train from here, actually from Mombasa, 
all the way to Malaba. The scope of works for the project entails clearing of the bushes along the corridor, construction of bridges and culverts, laying of the line where it is extensively damaged and ballasting. Upon completion, the operations will lead to a reduction of the number of trucks on the road because the final bit of the journey from Kisumu will be transported over Lake Victoria via the MV Uhuru ship. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. And also in Africa, South Sudan declared 2021 a year for investment as it seeks to attract foreign investors into its market. This comes after the World Bank's report ranked the country the most oil-dependent nation in the world, coming 187th position out of 190 economies on overall ease of doing business. Details of this and more in the business news from across the continent. The protracted civil war in South Sudan and the COVID-19 pandemic have triggered inflation resulting in prices of basic goods rising beyond what many can afford while some businesses have been closed and many people have lost their jobs. We declare today that this is the uh, investment year is part of the reforms in the economic sector. However, the country says its priority is the hoped for investment in agriculture, health, infrastructure, mining, petroleum and even tourism in the hope of employing the unemployed. Government needs to do serious reform in the economic sector from the Minister of Finance to the Central Bank and the reform that is executed, not the reform that is said. That way the country will gain some credibility in the eyes of the international uh, community and international banking institutions and they will be able to get some loan or they will be able to, to help the country to come out of the economic crisis. By this the government needs to do serious reform in the economic sector and gain credibility in the eyes of the international community and international banking institutions to access credit. Elsewhere, Uganda is in the final stage of negotiation with the Export-Import Bank of China to secure a loan of about $2 billion, which will finance the construction of a new standard gauge railway line that will boost its trade volumes by helping ease trade with its neighboring country, Kenya. Authorities say major construction works could begin in a year's time, and once the project kicks off, Uganda hopes it will create more work and also improve local revenues. Trade analysts argue that Uganda should take advantage of the proposed railway line to shift from being a net importer to an exporter by mobilizing their farmers and small medium enterprises. Finally, Egypt's exports of gold and jewelry topped 2.4 billion US dollars in 2020, rising up from 1.392 billion in 2019, marking a 76% growth, which nearly doubles the exports recorded despite the negative effects of the COVID-19 epidemic. The Secretary General of the Gold and Precious Metals Division in the country's Chamber of Commerce says that handmade products have become more in demand than before during his pandemic season, which has shocked the world economy and brought it to a heavier depression. The Egyptian handmade jewelry has also entered five new markets in Asia and Europe last year, which looks promising and could bring in more possibilities for growth in the coming years. And elsewhere across the globe, U.S. President Donald Trump has signed an executive order banning transactions with eight Chinese apps. The apps include popular payments platforms Alipay as well as QQ Wallet and WeChat Pay. The order, which takes effect in 45 days, says that the apps are being banned because they are a threat to the U.S. national security. This and more in our international news roundup. President Trump's order says by accessing personal electronic devices such as smartphones, tablets and computers, Chinese connected software applications can access and capture vast swaths of information from users, including sensitive personally identifiable information and private information. Trump has signed executive orders against a range of Chinese firms, arguing they could share data with the Chinese government. It flags the possibility that the apps could be used to track and build dossiers on U.S. federal employees. Tencent QQ comes Kana, Shareit, Vimet and WPS office are also included within the order, which only kicks in after Trump has left office. 
Meanwhile, travelers to the UK from abroad could soon be required to prove they have had a negative coronavirus test. The Department for Transport said the measure is one of several being considered to prevent the spread of COVID-19 across the UK border. The department added that additional measures, including testing before departure, will help keep the importation of new cases to an absolute minimum. Any such measure will be a devolved issue, so the department will need to agree a path forward with Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to make it UK-wide. Finally, the death penalty handed out to a former Chinese finance chief found guilty of corruption has been heavily criticized by human rights activists. Lai Xiumin was arrested in 2018 on charges of taking 1.8 billion yuan, which is equal to $280 million, in bribes over a 10-year period. It is one of the most severe sentences to stem from President Jinping's anti-corruption drive. Human Rights Watch said China is clearly taking a major step backwards. Chinese officials said crimes committed by Lai were during his time as chairman of Huarong Asset Management. The financial firm was set up in 1999 to take bad debts off China's largest state-owned banks. Human Rights Watch calls the tactic killing the chicken to show it to the monkeys so it makes an example of one person to instill obedience in all the others Now let me bring you up to speed with what has been happening in the world of sports. A football Kenya Federation League side Bandari FC have suffered an injury blow after their striker Shaban Kega was ruled out of action for the next four months. The club has confirmed that the striker has undergone surgery and will miss in action for the Dockers. Their own plan, a good run here by Muita and what a finish. Before William Wadri left the pitch later as Bandari claimed a 2 0 win. <laughs> the Dokas who unveiled Andre Kasambungo as the new head coach will be in action in the FKF League when they play against Tasca on 16th of this month. Frederick Mwoki for Channel One Sports. Now, Jose Mourinho has said Tottenham Hotspur has been rewarded for taking the Carabao Cup seriously as they moved within one game of a first trophy in 13 years with a 2-0 semi-final win over Brentford last night. Spurs will meet the winner between Manchester City and Manchester United who clash tonight in other semi-final match. And it is Brentford in their change strip who will kick from left to right in the first 45 minutes. A uh, grey outfit with red socks against Tottenham Hotspur in their lily white shirts and blue shorts. And Sissoko's made a run. Reggio finds him and Spurs in front. It's a great ball in but no one picked up Sissoko's run and he's guided that header into the top corner of the Brentford net. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and Spurs lead 1-0. Well, that cross from Reguilón was absolutely begging. Not easy. Corner kick is driven in. Oh, Tony, it was a free header. It's in. Ivan Tony is equalised. He doesn't stand still. He gets himself up, but is he? Is he offside? Well, that 
would suggest his right knee as he's on the ground is in an offside position we do have VAR here Peter Banks is the video assistant referee well I've long since given up trying to second guess VAR to be honest with you but I think Thomas Frank will be fearing the worst here the uh, information I think is being communicated to Mike Dean and it's offside have it Harry Kane now Dombele through to Son Son's done brilliantly Son surely sends Tottenham Hotspur into the Carabao Cup final with a brilliant finish the Spurs counter-attacking goal the pace and the Thank you so much for watching Channel One Lunchtime News. We really appreciate your company. I am Safina Cheng Oma. Our sign language interpreter is Simon Carotha. Have a lovely afternoon and stay safe. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Fika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management, and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Fika Branch, 0725-000 706 Meru Branch, Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution. Mwane Faisal ndo yu aliwekelea bidi ya TV na ndio yu anenda nao Faisal, embu tuwa mendi vipu lekelea bidi. Milienda kwenye website ya Quick Bid, nikatizama nika chagua kuwekelea kwenye TV. Sa miliwekelea mara tatu, nikaja kwa mshindi, nika kutana bidi yenye imefanya kwa niko mshindi ilikuwa ni 168 saa leo nimekaitwa nikaja nikachukua mchukue TV yangu haya faizal mali yako tukusaidie Jiunga na Quick Bid ni rahisi. Enda kwenye Mpesa, bonyeza Paybill kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi ya bidhaa unayotaka na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 20 tu kama idadi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua. Quick Bid, bidhaa bora kwa bei ya chini. Faisal ndoyo aliwekelea bidi ya TV na ndio hii anaenda nayo Faisal. Hebu tuambie ni vipi uliwekelea bidi. Milienda kwenye website ya Quick Bid. Nikatizama nikachagua kuwekelea kwenye TV. Sa miliwekelea mara tatu. Nikaja kwa mshindi, nikakutana bidi yenye imefanya kwa niko mshindi ilikuwa ni 168. Sa leo nimekaitwa nikaja nikachukua mchukue TV yangu. Haya Faisal, mali yako. Tukusaidie. 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 
Jiunga na Quickbit ni rahisi. Enda kwenye Mpesa, bonyeza Paybill kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi bidhaa unayotaka na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 tu kama idadi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbit.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua. Quickbit, bidhaa bora kwa bei ya chini. The magic of FA Cup is back with mouth-watering ties. As the Premier League and Championship clubs enter the competition in the third round, KBC Channel 1 will ensure you don't miss out live and exclusive on your true sports partner from the 8th to 11th of January 2021 as we kickstart the new year with you in mind. Save the dates for the best and route to the finals. Jambo mpenzi mtazamaji wa KBC Channel 1 nikitumai kwamba umzima tangu Juma lililopita tulipokuwa pamoja ni Juma lingine tunakutana kulikunjua jamvi letu la mkulima tukiwa tayari kujifunza mbinu tofauti za kilimo na teknolojia zinazoimarisha afya kama desturi mieni wako Frederick Mbatha karibu Amaranth almaarufu Terere ni mmea mzuri sana. Mchicha huu aina ya grain amaranth unaweza ukala mbegu zake, majani yake unaweza ukayala kama mboga na mbegu zake zinaweza kusagwa na ukapata unga. Mchicha huu tunaozungumzia hii leo si ule wa kawaida ambao unaojulikana na wakulima wengi. Kwani ule wa kawaida utumika kama mboga na uwi mrefu sana. Tunaoangazia leo una madini tele na unasaidia sana mtu yote yule mgonjwa na kumpa kinga. Ebu tazama. Kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa mvua na ukame katika maeneo mengine ya Kenya, mchicha umekuwa mmea badala ya mahindi ambayo hayapatikani kwa wingi na hivyo kusababisha ukosefu wa chakula. Bila mvua ya kutosha, mahindi huchukua muda wa miezi mitatu ili ukomae, ilhali mchicha huchukua muda wa miezi miwili na huhitaji mvua kidogo tu. Wa Kenya karibu 45% hawana chakula cha kutosha wako malnourished na wakitumia vyakula kama amaranth ambayo e, ziko na madini ziko na vitamins ziko na proteini na pia ziko hata na carbohydrates ni nzuri ajili hii ni kama tunaita nutrition powerhouse it is packed in one small one small seed Mchicha ama terere kama vile wengi wa ujuavyo ni mmea wenye madini. Mchicha huu ni kama ule mchicha tuliouzoea hapo awali, lakini huu ni mgeni nchini mwetu na uko na tofauti kidogo. Majani yake yanaweza kutumiwa kama mboga, tembe zake ukazipika na kuzila hivyo ama kusaga na kupata unga. Hii mchicha iko tofauti na zile mchicha mengine ni kwa sababu huwa inazaa kichwa kikubwa hiyo kichwa imejaa mbegu ndogo ndogo na hiyo mbegu ni iko na dhamana sana kwa mwili ya mwanadamu kwa sababu iko na rotuba nyingi sana kwa mfano iko na protein ya hali ya juu hii proteini 
unaweza kulinganisha na ile proteini ambayo inapatikana kwa kutoka kwa mifugo kama proteini ya mayai pia iko na e, e, madini tuko na calcium iko na calcium e, ambayo inapatikana kwa kwa kiwango kikuu kwa hii mbegu calcium hasa hasa inapatikana kwa sana kwa maziwa na watoto wadogo mnajua wanakuzwa na maziwa Wana, wanapewa maziwa mara kwa mara ni kwa sababu gani ni kwa sababu hiyo calcium inahitajika kujenga mifupa ya mwanadamu hasa hasa wale watoto wachanga hiyo calcium pia ni nzuri kwa wale wamama wajawazito 